So, hello everyone. Uh, first of all, I want to thank the organizers and especially Damien uh, for inviting me to present uh, my talk. And uh, I apologize in advance for my English because I um, uh, haven't practiced it for a long time. So uh, if it will uh, cause any misunderstandings, please uh, feel free to ask your questions. Uh, so, um, the title of my talk is uh, on bivalent semantics uh, and natural deduction for some infectious logics. Uh, and uh, I'm going to describe a general aim of my talk. Uh, so, um, the aim of my talk is basically twofold. So, uh, the first um, goal is to propose a kind of uh, bivalent uh, semantics for four valid infectious logics, especially two logics. One is, was presented by Harry Deutsch. It called uh, SFD, and uh, the second was presented by Damien Schmuck. Um, uh, it, it is called uh, DSFD. Uh, the semantics I'm going to present uh, will be formulated uh, uh, in terms of the framework of so-called the informational semantics, which was uh, elaborated by Russian logician Evgeny Vaishvila uh, in late 70s. So by doing so, I will try to show that um, we can argue that conjunction and disjunction within infectious logics can be viewed as traditional uh, in the contrast to uh, the recent discussion uh, basically initiated by Hitoshi Amori and Damien Schmuck. Uh, the second general goal is to propose solid and complete uh, natural deduction calculi for both uh, SFD and DSFD. Uh, and by doing so, uh, I will try to reach uh, basically two additional goals. The first one is to develop a calculus for SFD, which is better than Petruchin's, uh, Yaroslav Petruchin's calculus and SFD. Sorry, Yaroslav. Um, uh, it is better, I think, in some respect, and I will try to show and explain why. And the second goal uh, is to develop a calculus for DSFD, because uh, to the best of my knowledge, uh, this system has not yet been formalized in terms of uh, natural deduction. Okay, um, the first part of my talk is devoted to the description of some basic definitions uh, of four valid infectious logics, uh, which I am interested in. Uh, I will work with two logics, as I said, SFD and DSFD. The first one was introduced by Harry Deutsch in his uh, work, uh, relevant analytic entailment uh, in the relevance logic news later in 1977. And the second one was uh, introduced by Damien Schmuck in his paper defining LFIs and LFUs in extension of infectious logics. Um, it was later um, studied uh, from the more philosophical side uh, in his second paper, An Epistemic Interpretation of Far Consistent with Clean Logic, uh, in uh, 2019. Uh, so, actually, there is no some, any, uh, there's no anything special about the definition of propositional language. I will use uh, the standard uh, propositional language, which contains conjunction, disjunction, and negation. Uh, I introduced the notation for the set of all propositional variables, uh, formulas, and uh, what is important is to uh, introduce the notation for the set of literals of this language. That is the set of propositional variables and their negations. Okay, um, the matrix semantics for SFD is well known uh, and it can be seen as the matrix uh, which is based on four Belknapian truth values, T, B, and F, uh, which are usually interpreted as uh, true and non-false, P as uh, uh, true and false simultaneously, N as uh, neither true nor false, and F as false and non-true. Uh, the set of designated truth values contains uh, only two of them. Uh, they are T and P, and uh, the whole set is interpreted as something like uh, truth set. Uh, the set associated, these, they're uh, such values that associated with truth. Uh, and um, the peculiarity is in the definitions of truth, function, truth functions. Uh, you can see that um, the definitions of uh, conjunction and uh, disjunction are characterized by specific behavior of the value n. Uh, this is a uh, very uh, peculiar feature of uh, so-called infectious logic. And uh, I will uh, talk a bit more about this notion uh, a bit later. 
So uh, the matrix, uh, matrix for um, DSFD is defined in a um, dual way. It is also based on four uh, values. Uh, it is also uh, includes um, the set of designated values containing T and B, but um, the truth tables are characterized by specific uh, behavior of the value B uh, instead of N. Um, dually to the case of S of D. So uh, the definition of uh, entailment in both logics are uh, defined as usual through the preservation of the set of designated values, or through the preservation of the designated values. Uh, and both uh, SFD and DSFD belong to the class of so-called infectious logic. We can define um, an infectious logic in the following way. So uh, a logic L is called infectious if and only if there is a, some truth value that uh, if it occurs in the set of arguments of a certain um, truth function associated uh, or intended to interpret uh, any connectives, then the whole uh, value of this connective will be um, evaluated by this infectious value. Obviously that uh, in the context of SFD and DSFD, the role of such value is played by N and B reflect, uh, respectively. So um, a lot of different interpretations from the computational interpretation, um, which uh, reflects some context from the errors uh, in computer calculations to the uh, philosophical uh, interpretation uh, of this property is well known. For example, uh, the infectious behavior of N uh, commonly uh, reflects a specific strong interpretation of truth value gaps uh, and vice versa for the value P. Okay, um, the next part, in the next part I'm going to present and descri describe some uh, basic definitions and motivations for informational symmetry. Um, Evgeny Vashrila was a Russian logician and uh, one of the um, founder of the Russian community of philosophical logicians in Moscow. Uh, and um, he was mostly concerned with the problems related to, the, to relevance logics and explication of the notion of relevant entailment. And um, it should be stressed that he was um, hardcore endorser of the relevance logic. Uh, he's, uh, uh, he endorsed uh, the view that um, there were traditional um, uh, stage in a um, history of logic, then there were symbolic and non-classical logic, and the next step is the um, appearing of the relevance logic. And then uh, all different systems should be relevantized. And one of his um, comparatively known results was the specific semantics for first degree entailment logic FDE. Although Vaishvila presented his semantics in English only in 1996 in his paper, A Theory of Logical Relevance, which were published in the journal Logic et Analyse uh, in 1996. Uh, it was actually developed much earlier uh, and in late 70s and published in a series of works in Russian. In fact, in fact, uh, his approach is a variation of uh, Michael Dunn's intuitive semantics for logic of first degree entailment. I will call it uh, FD in what follows. So uh, the cornerstone of um, uh, Vaishvila's approach is the using of the notion of state description, which is borrowed from the works of uh, Barhill and uh, Rudolf Karnak. Uh, and um, a classical state description, the notion of a classical state description uh, is taken as the basic step. It can be defined as such set of literals, non-empty set of literals, uh, which enjoys two additional properties. Uh, it's the properties of completeness, which means that uh, for every propositional variable P, either P included in alpha or uh, not P included in alpha. And uh, the property of um, uh, consistency for every uh, propositional variable P, either P not included in al on alpha, or not be not included in alpha. Uh, and what is more important for Vaishvila's approach and Vaishvila's semantics for uh, FDE is the notion of generalized state description, which can be defined as an arbitrary set, uh, subset of uh, literals. 
then uh, we can define um, mo models for uh, in interpreting uh, first degree entailment logic can be defined as follows. Uh, FD model is a pair uh, S, which contains the set of state generalized state descriptions and the relation function, uh, which ascribing the truth values to propositional variables in generalized state description. Uh, and uh, the truth and falsity conditions uh, are pretty uh, well known. Um, the only difference and peculiarity of this semantics is uh, that um, the relation function ascribing truth value uh, regarding some state description. So the formula takes a value in some generalized state description. Um, entailment is defined as truth preserving from the premises to conclusion. And uh, this semantics can be easily extended to the whole family of first degree entailment logic, such as strong clinical logic, K3, priest logic of paradox, LP, and classical logic. If you want to uh, obtain K3, we need to exclude inconsistent state descriptions from the states and restrict the valuation function to the set which uh, doesn't contain uh, glutty valuations. If you want to um, obtain a semantics for LP, we need to exclude incomplete state descriptions from states and restrict valuation uh, to the set of values which uh, does not contain uh, gaps. Uh, so finally, if you want to obtain a semantics for classical logic, we need to use the classical state descriptions and restrict relation to the set of T and F. So what's so special about Vashvila semantics? Um, the main motivation for Vashvila was aiming at provide uh, an adequate explication of the notion of relevant entailment <coughs> with the help of the notion of semantical information. And according to his idea, if you want to take the informa informativeness of uh, sentences seriously, then we can use constructions based on the notion of state descriptions. And this is where his semantics differs from uh, semantics of Michael Dunn. Uh, but however, what is the definition of the informativeness? Uh, informally, uh, informativeness of a sentence phi in relation to some set of possibilities M is an index uh, that shows uh, how an acceptance of the truth of phi restricts the initial set of possibilities M. Or we can um, define informativeness as the pair which consists of the truth set associated with the, uh, a certain sentence phi, uh, for example. A and uh, the second um, member of that pair is the overall set of possible situations, which is a some non-empty set of state descriptions. Uh, Weishvila also was um, de def also defended the idea of Wilhelm Ackermann uh, that the uh, notion of logical entailment uh, should be explicated uh, in the following way. So from A follows logically B, uh, if and only if uh, the information of the conclusion B um, forms uh, a part of the information of the premise. So Weishvila tries to introduce, uh, introduce the specific notation for that relation uh, to denote that uh, the informativeness of Psi is a part of the informativeness, uh, informativeness sorry, uh, of phi. And uh, this relation can be expressed simply as inclusion between truth, truth sets uh, of the corresponding sentences. Um, so therefore, for any arbit arbitrary logic L, uh, if its entailment relation is truth preserving, then it can be characterized in the following way. If from set of sentences gamma logically follows some sentence uh, phi, uh, if and only if the inform informativeness of uh, phi um, is a part of informativeness of uh, the set of sentences gamma, if and only if uh, the true set of all sentences from gamma in, uh, is included in the true set associated with phi. Uh, so to clarify how uh, this approach really works, um, it is better to turn to examples. Uh, suppose that we deal with two sentences, uh, P and P or Q. And for the sake of simplicity, suppose that we work with classical models and the overall set of possible state descriptions contains literals constructed only from P and Q. So according to the corresponding semantic conditions, we can observe that uh, the overall set of situations represented by this uh, four-valued set of state descriptions. The first one contain 
so, contains p and q the second one contains p and not q and so on again using uh, the corresponding semantic conditions we can obtain the true set associated with the sentence p in classical models uh, which looks as follows uh, like this uh, and uh, a true set of p or q um, which uh, looks uh, like this. So it is also useful to introduce the notation for those set of state descriptions that are excluded after accepting the truth of the set of, of the sentences. Uh, in what follows, I will uh, denote them by a letter E and uh, call uh, them as uh, non truth sets. Thus, the corresponding semantic conditions uh, can help to calculate the non truth sets for. Uh, the sentence P and sentence P or Q. You can uh, see them on this slide. Uh, and it, is, it becomes clear that uh, P excludes more state descriptions than uh, the sentence, than sentence uh, P or Q does, thereby reflecting the traditional claim that P or Q is less informative than P. In virtue of the fact that uh, the true set of associated with P is included in the true set associated with P or Q, we obtain that P uh, logically entails P or Q in classical logic. Using such a vivid approach of the informativeness, Maishvili defended his own view on the nature of the notorious paradoxes of classical entailment. It is clear, uh, according to the definitions which I discussed above, that the sentences of the form P and not P are maximally informative because they exclude all possible situations. In other words, a true set associated with such sentences uh, is empty, while the set, non-true set associated with the sentences uh, coincide with the overall set of situations, the state descriptions. In turn, uh, sentences of the form P or not P are absolutely non-informative because uh, dually uh, the true set associated with P or not P is equal to the set of the overall set of state descriptions and uh, um, non-true set associated with P or not P um, is empty. It turns out that the informativeness of an arbitrary sentence Q will always form part of informativeness of contradiction, whereas informativeness of P or not P will always form part of the informativeness of an arbitrary sentence Q. As a result, paradoxes arise in classical logic. This observation led Weishwila to the claim that in classical logic, we do not deal with the pure informativeness of sentences. Thus, Weishwila concluded that if we want to deal with the pure inform uh, information of sentences, then we need to drop the requirements of consistency and completeness, thereby shifting to the notion of generalized state descriptions. And as we've seen before, uh, the notion of generalized state descriptions allows to construct models appropriated for uh, interpretation of FDE. So the similarity between this approach and the American plan semantics for FD is evident, as I think. So how to apply this approach to the case of SFD and to the case DSFD? Simple. The informational semantics for SFD is obtained by making a simple change to Weishwila's semantics for FD. We define an affirmative SFD model as a pair S1, which also contains uh, whose the first element also is the set of states uh, and uh, state descriptions. And the second element is also a relation function which ascribe um, truth, value, truth value to propositional variables in generalized state descriptions. Truth and falsity conditions in the affirmative SFD model are defined as they're defined in FD models, except in two conditions, the truth condition of disjunction and the falsity condition for conjunction. As to truth of disjunction, we, can, we need to use the following condition. The disjunction of phi, uh, phi or uh, psi is true if and only if either uh, phi is true and in the same time uh, psi either true or false. Or uh, another alternative, other alternative is that um, psi is true and uh, phi um, either true or false. So the motivation for this condition will be clear uh, later, and, uh, the, but the motivation for the falsity of conjunction um, is rather technical because it is primarily uh, needed for the uh, preserving uh, De Morgan laws, this logic. 
So uh, the entailment relation also defined uh, through the truth preservation and uh, the following equivalence theorem holds. Uh, it can be easily proved proven that uh, the semantic, uh, the matrix semantic of FD is equivalent to the uh, informational semantic just presented. Um, important remark, informational semantic for SFD can be easily extended to the case of the weak linear logic, key W3, or it is sufficient to modify the definition of uh, affirmative SFD model in two respects. First, uh, to exclude inconsistent state descriptions from states and restrict the relation function to the set which doesn't contain inconsistent valuation. Uh, so there was a um, very interesting discussion in the recent literature, which were basically initiated by the work uh, of Hitoshi Amori and Damien Shmoo, uh, in which they um, reviewed the claim, in which they claim that the conjunction and disjunction in infectious logics cannot be seen uh, as uh, those that capture traditional uh, approach to the meaning of this connector. Uh, in short, uh, they claimed that disjunction in the context of infectious logics represented within the plurivalent semantics is not disjunction as traditionally conceived. You can see them celebrating this claim on this slide. Um, but uh, I believe that we can state something opposite uh, in the about conjunction and disjunction of infectious logic in the framework of the informational semantics. Uh, one thing that should be uh, stressed here is that the machinery of informational semantics allows for interesting in explication of the truth conditional approach to meaning. So truth conditional approach to meaning states that to know the meaning of a sentence uh, is to know the conditions under which it's true. So in the context of informational semantics, the knowing of such conditions can be reduced to the pointing out to the concrete state descriptions in which the sentence is true. And surprisingly, from this point of view, disjunction of SFD coincides with disjunction of logic of paradox in this respect. It can be easily shown that the two sets of P or Q in SFD and LP are identical, and they both are represented by the following set of state descriptions. You can see uh, it on the screen. This means that disjunction in uh, SFD and disjunction uh, of LP are true under exactly the same conditions, thereby representing the same meaning. Since disjunction in LP is supposed to be traditional, uh, we can conclude that so is disjunction in SFD. But however, we can provide an even more striking example. If we compare disjunctions of key W3 and classical logic in the context of informational semantics, it can be easily shown that the true sets of P or Q in weak Klini and classical logic are also coincide. They both are represented by the following set of state descriptions. Similarly, this means that disjunction in weak Klini and classical logics are true under exactly the same conditions and hence represent the same meaning. So disjunction of key uh, W3 in this respect is equal to disjunction of classical logic, a pure traditional one. From this point of view, I think it may, can be said that uh, these disjunctions are traditional or reflect traditional view. Another interesting option which is provided by informational semantics is um, an interesting interpretation of uh, an, interest, an interesting account of uh, analyzing of the failure of addition uh, principle, which is characteristic for SFD and some related uh, infectious logics. Uh, so we can write um, down the true sets associated with uh, disjunction P or Q in the context of SFD and FD. They uh, look like this. Uh, and it is also uh, useful to uh, write down the not non-true sets for disjunction P or Q in SFD and FD. So the non-truths for this uh, sentence in both logics looks look um, like this. And applying by Schwill definition of informativeness, we can conclude that the degree of informativeness of P or Q in SFD is higher than it is in FD, than it is in FD, because uh, the non-truth non -truth set of associated with P or Q in FD is included in the non-truth set of uh, um, 
P or Q in SFD. In other words, the truth of disjunctive sentences in SFD excludes more possible situations than it does in the context of FD. And hence, disjunctive sentences in SFD are seen as more informative than they are in FD. And you can see that uh, an important role is played by the state descriptions uh, P, Q, P and not P, Q and not Q. So uh, which are sufficient to force the truth of disjunction in uh, FD, but they are excluded um, in the case of SFD. You can find the state descriptions here in the non true set of P or Q uh, within SFD. This. So if we write down the true sets associated with P and Q um, independently, then uh, we can see that the truth set associated with P is not included in the truth set associated with P or Q in SFD. And um, similarly, the truth set associated with Q is not included uh, in the set associated with P or Q in SFD as well. And hence, addition principle fails. Uh, that is, there are some um, sentences such that P uh, does not entail in SFD P or Q, and Q does not entail uh, a P or Q in SFD. So uh, in order to um, consider uh, the case of infectious gluts, uh, the case of DSFD, um, we could, it is useful to reformulate the Vaishvili semantics for FD uh, in the following way. Um, we could think of the meaning of a logical connective as having two dimensions. The first one is positive, uh, that is representing information about its truth and falsity. And the second one is negative, uh, that is representing information, information about the non-truth non and non-falsity of a connective. Thus, it is possible to formulate the informational semantics of FD from the negative point of view. And you can easily obtain the, uh, the following definition. Uh, it completely, uh, coincides with the one I presented uh, in the beginning of my talk. The only difference is that the semantic conditions are formulated in terms of non-truth and non-falsity. And by, uh, the um, entailment relation is also defined uh, via, uh, via true preservation, truth preservation, and uh, we can um, also uh, obtain um, a semantics, such semantics for K3, LP, and CL by doing uh, the same modifications of uh, the semantics of FD. And by using uh, such formulation of FD, we can simply uh, obtain a semantics for DSFD, which uh, looks completely dual to the case of SFD. So we define a rejective uh, DSFD model as a pair S2, which consists uh, also uh, of the set of states state descriptions and the relation function, uh, which um, ascribing truth value to uh, propositional variables in generalized state descriptions. And uh, we need to uh, replace only two semantic conditions from this definition of FD. Uh, in particular, we need to replace the truth, non-truth for conjunction and non-truth, uh, non-falsity for disjunction. The completely dual conditions, uh, dual to the case of SFD. So, uh, entailment relation is defined via uh, truth preservation as well. And uh, we also can uh, prove uh, the equivalent theorem between the matrix semantics of DSFD and the informational semantics uh, thus obtained. Uh, it is also um, should be note, noted that, notice that informational semantics for DSFD thus obtained can be easily extended to the case of par consistent with linear logic. It is sufficient to modify the definition of uh, rejective uh, DSFD model in two respects, to exclude incomplete state descriptions and restrict evaluation uh, function to the set containing uh, T, F, and T and F together. Uh, so we can dualize the argument which uh, we considered uh, with respect to SFD in order to uh, show that the conjunction uh, in the context of DSFD coincides or can be viewed as traditional uh, uh, conjunction. Uh, and surprisingly, uh, 
sorry, um, first of all, we need to dualize the definition of informativeness, which we presented before. So in the first case, in the case of FDE, we defined uh, the informativeness of sentences with, of sentence five with respect to some set of situations uh, as the index that um, showing how the accepting the truth restricts uh, the set of all situations. Uh, now we can dualize this definition and uh, define the informativeness of, uh, um, uh, of a sentence phi in relation to some overall set of state descriptions as an index showing how the acceptance of non-truth restricts uh, the set of overall situations. And uh, from this point of view, we can argue that conjunction of DSFD uh, coincides with the conjunction of K3. It can be easily shown, again, by using the uh, semantic condition presented before, that the non-truth set of P and Q in DSFD uh, and K3 are identical. They both are presented by the following set. This means that conjunctions uh, from this negative point of view uh, in DSFD and K3 are not true under exactly the same conditions. They are representing the same meaning. Uh, since the conjunction in K3 is supposed to be traditional, so is the conjunction of DSFD. Again, we can uh, provide more striking example if we compare conjunctions of PWK and classical logic in the context of informational semantics with rejective conditions. It can be shown that the non-truth sets of conjunction P and Q in PWK and CL are also coincide. They both are presented by the set uh, containing three state descriptions. Similarly, this means that conjunctions in PVK, PWK, and uh, CL are not true under exactly the same conditions and hence represent the same meaning. Conjunction uh, thus understood uh, uh, of PVK is in this respect is uh, equal to the conjunction of uh, classical logic. Again, we can provide an interesting interpretation of the favor of simplification principle. So we can write the true sets associated with a conjunction P and Q in the context of DSFD and FD, and uh, non true sets associated with this sentence. And then applying dualized Weishwil definition of informativeness, we can conclude that the degree of informativeness of P uh, conjunction Q in DSFD is higher than it is in FD because uh, the set, the two set associated with uh, conjunction. Uh, P, uh, conjunction P and uh, Q is smaller than the true set associated with conjunction of uh, P and Q in context of DSFD. In other words, the non-truth of conjunctive sentences in DSFD excludes more possible situations than it does in the context of FD. And hence, conjunctive sentences in DSFD are seen as more informative than they are in FD. Uh, again, from the negative point of view. So an important role in failure of uh, simplification uh, is played by uh, these state descriptions, which are highlighted by uh, red color. These state descriptions are sufficient to claim that the conjunction is not true in the context of FD. But if we accept the infectious interpretations of infectious interpretation of GLUTs, of inconsistent valuations. Uh, then uh, it is obvious that this should not be the case in the case of DSFD. And this is why uh, the semantic conditions for the truth, non-truth of conjunction uh, looks as, uh, as it is in the definitions before. Sorry, Alex, uh, we have a clarificatory question by Sanjan. Yep. Hi. Um, I it's just a question where you said that conjunction in PWK is the same as uh, the one in CL. Um, conjunction, yeah. Or conjunction. Yeah. Conjunction, conjunction. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just a little confused because um, I think in PWK you cannot break a conjunction. So P doesn't follow from P and Q always. Isn't that true? Oh, uh, yes, uh, in, P, in PWK, P uh, and Q, P doesn't follow from P and Q. Yes, that's right. So 
what's the problem i can so the problem uh, so i guess i'm confusing this a bit so you said yeah. uh, conjunction of pwk is is the same as the conjunction in uh, cl so yeah i mean that uh, it it is the same in the in the following sense that conjunction in pwk is non true in under exactly the same conditions uh, as it is in the classical logic so oh, oh, oh. If, if we analyze the conjunction of pwk and the classical that. logic here you. then you can see that uh, it will be non true under this this and this uh, state description so as in classical logic yeah thanks yeah. okay i've seen another question uh, yeah okay no, 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 go ahead okay uh, so yeah and um, if we write uh, the separated uh, two sets for p and q uh, which uh, arise uh, within dsfd and fd then we can see that the true set associated with conjunction p and q is not included in true set associated with p in dsfd uh, and uh, similar to the other conjunct which means that in dsfd uh, conjunction p and q uh, does not entail p and, and does not entail q as well hence simplification fails in dsfd so uh, next part uh, is devoted to the nature of deduction formalization of this logic uh, Yaroslav Petruhin studied a natural deduction calculi for four valid generalizations of linear logics in his paper, uh, Natural Deduction for Pitting's Four Valid Generalizations of Linear Logics, published in Logical, Logical Universalis in uh, 2017. And SFD was one of the systems which he explored, but he denoted um, by different um, label, FDE with this. Uh, the conditional in this upper script. Uh, in turn, um, DSFD has not yet been formalized as a natural deduction system, as I said before. So uh, this is how Yaroslav's uh, system looks like. Uh, I denote it here as NSFD. Um, what is interesting here is that the, instead of using the rules, traditional rules for uh, disjunction introduction, uh, it is restored by these three rules, which can help to simulate uh, the disjunction introduction in some way. And what is more important and uh, interesting is the using of the uh, rule, such unusual form of the rule for disjunction elimination, R10. Uh, so the using of uh, this unusual rule is um, technically motivated because during the completeness proofs, uh, which involves the uh, Henkin style constructions, Yaroslav used a very unusual uh, version of the primus property uh, imposed on theories. Uh, I recall he, it here as quasi, quasi primus. So if this junction uh, phi or psi is included in the theory, non-trivial theory of gamma, then either phi included in gamma and psi included in gamma, or non-phi included in gamma and psi included in gamma, or thirdly, phi uh, included in gamma and not psi included in gamma. Um, quite unusual uh, feature, uh, quite unusual feature. Uh, so I try, I present alternative uh, uh, calculi, calculus for SFD, which looks uh, as follows. Um, in contrast to Yaroslav's system, uh, it preserves these uh, rules for uh, simula simulating uh, disjunction introduction, uh, but it enjoys the traditional form of disjunction elimination, which means that we can use the traditional primus, uh, traditional form of the primus property during the uh, completeness proofs. But uh, the absence of the Yaroslav's rule uh, caused the addition of two additional characteristic uh, principles to that system. Uh, this is a well-known characteristic principle of SFD, which is the disjunction of phi if psi entails the law of excluded middle uh, regarding phi, and the commutativity rule for disjunction. So 
uh, for DSFD, we can uh, introduce dual calculus, which is also um, enjoys the traditional form of disjunction elimination rule, but it uh, it contains uh, completely dual um, rules for conjunctions that simulates that simulate uh, conjunction uh, elimination. Uh, notice that. Uh, the R2 rule, which helps to simulate uh, the disjunction introduction in the case of SFD, now helps to simulate the conjunction elimination. And uh, the rules R3 and R4 now replaced by these simulations of uh, uh, conjunction elimination. In turn, uh, we need to add two additional rules, the commutativity rule for conjunction, and well-known characteristic principle for DSFD and other power consistent infectious logic. Uh, from a contradiction, we can derive the conjunction phi and psi. You can see that two, the two calculus are completely dual to each other. And it's uh, very uh, interesting because it represents the fundamental duality uh, between two logics, SFD and DSFD. So for both uh, both n1 and uh, n2 are sound and complete with respect to corresponding models. So we can prove the following theorems. Uh, and uh, according to the equivalence between the corresponding semantics that we proved um, before, we can obtain the result that the um, Yaroslav's uh, calculus is equivalent to the mine. So, um, Moreover, uh, the presented system, uh, very convenient if you want to obtain natural deduction calculus for the well-known extensions of SFD and DSFD. A natural deduction calculus for uh, weak linear logic is obtained simply by adding the low, uh, the, the rule for explosion to the calculus uh, formalizing uh, SFD. In turn, natural deduction calculus for PWK is obtained simply by adding this uh, rule for low excluded middle to the uh, calculus formalizing uh, DSFD. A simple ch ch change should be made in the proof uh, of completeness, obvious. In the case of uh, PWK, one needs to require prime theories to be complete. Uh, whereas in the case of key W3, one needs to use consistent prime theories. So um, in conclusion, I want to uh, summarize some of my main thesis. Uh, so we have seen that it is possible to claim that conjunction and disjunction in infectious logic represented within informational semantics can be seen as capturing the traditional meaning of these connectives. I hope so. Informational semantics gives an opportunity to use standard notion of primeness, thereby providing simple natural deduction calculi not for SFD, not only for SFD and DSFD, but also for KW3 and PVK. And uh, the, my, my claim that the calculus presented in this paper is much more natural than the calculus presented by Yaroslav Petrukin. And so, um, as to the future work, uh, an interesting question may um, concern the problem of developing the informational semantics for the remaining four values logics described by Damien Schmuck in his paper um, of his paper of uh, 2016. Uh, note that, notice that the two logics from this list are already studied by me and Yaroslav in our recent paper, exactly to a non-falsity logic Smith and infectious one, where they are presented and interpreted as the non-falsity and exactly two versions of SFD. And uh, these systems receive the names uh, of SNFL and SETL um, respectively. Notice also that Graham Priest studied the um, different natural deduction calculi for FDA related system, and he independently considered the system SETL, but under different name, and uh, presented a natural deduction calculus for this system. Whereas the SNFL, to the best of my knowledge, uh, still has not yet been formalized in terms of natural deduction calculus. So it might be an interesting problem to address this issue. Thank you very much for your attention.